let's take a look at Hebrews 9 verse 15 to 10 verse 18. A section that we will call, Jesus' sacrifice was superior to the Old Testament sacrifices. The passage contains five paragraphs, and thus it makes five points. One, Jesus made a one-time effectual sacrifice. That's 9 verse 23 to 28. Two, the Old Testament sacrifices were ineffectual shadows. That's 10 verses 1 to 4. Three, Jesus once for all sacrifice cancelled the old system. 10 verses 5 through 10. Four, Jesus' sacrifice makes people perfect. 10 verses 11 to 14. And five, Jesus' sacrifice secures forgiveness. 10 verses 15 to 18. Point number one. Jesus made a one-time effectual sacrifice. Hebrews 9 verse 23 to 28. Earlier in the letter, the author made a point that Christ came as our high priest. In 9 verse 11, he says, He went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made. Here in 9 verse 23 to 28, he returns to this theme. He makes two points. There are heavenly things and there are copies of heavenly things. The copies are the earthly sanctuary and everything pertaining to it. The heavenly sanctuary is in the presence of God. The copies of heavenly things include ineffectual sacrifices, mortal priests, and a human sanctuary. Whereas the heavenly things themselves have an effectual sacrifice, an eternal high priest, and a heavenly sanctuary. Point number two. The Old Testament sacrifices were ineffectual shadows. Hebrews 10 verses 1 to 4. In this passage, the author quotes some Old Testament texts. He offers them as scriptural proofs pointing to the need for Jesus to come. Essentially, he's arguing that Jesus had to come to once and for all replace the numerous Old Testament sacrifices for sin. The argument is that the Old Testament required repetitive sacrifices and that these repetitive sacrifices could not atone for sin. They pointed forward to the coming of Christ who would make the real atonement. Point number three, Jesus once for all sacrifice cancelled the old system. Hebrews 10 verses 5 to 10. This portion begins by quoting David who said, Sacrifice and offering you do not desire. Here I am, I have come to do your will. It's a quote from Psalm 40 verses 6 to 8. But the author of Hebrews applies it to Jesus. In Hebrews, it's Jesus who says, Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, here I am, I have come to do your will. This is Hebrews 10 verses 6 to 8. He goes on to argue that God did not delight in animal sacrifices. Jesus' obedience and sacrifice ended them. The conclusion is that we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Hebrews 10 verses 9 to 10. Point number four. Jesus' sacrifice makes people perfect. Hebrews 10 verses 11 to 14. This paragraph begins with the inadequacy of the old system. Verse 11. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. The Old Testament sacrifices were repetitive, but ineffectual. 
the paragraph concludes by pointing out the effectiveness of the new covenant and new sacrifice. In verse 14, he says, For by one sacrifice he, Jesus, has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. He argues in the middle that Jesus has successfully atoned, therefore he ascended to the right hand of majesty, and he is seated at the right hand of God, waiting for his enemies to be made his footstool. Point number five. Jesus' sacrifice secures forgiveness. Hebrews 10 verses 15 to 18. Here the author begins with what Jeremiah wrote, namely, This is the covenant I will make with them after that time. And their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. This is from Jeremiah 31 verse 33 and 31 verse 34. Now, what's intriguing is that the author of Hebrews equates what Jeremiah wrote with what the Holy Spirit said. So he doesn't say Jeremiah wrote it. He says the Holy Spirit said these things, pointing to the future sacrifice of Christ. And this leads the author to verse 18 as his conclusion. Since forgiveness has been obtained under the new covenant, there is no need for any further offerings for the forgiveness of sin. In the immortal words of Jesus on the cross, Tetaleste, it is finished. 